Skiers. I'm Jeff from SkiEssentials.com. I'm Bob. Hi. Uh, we're back. Bob and I are here again to talk about another 2021 ski. Uh, keep keep on going. Keep yeah. the routine going. If they keep making them, we'll keep talking They're about gonna them. They're going to keep making them, and yeah. then next year they'll make, they'll make new some ones. more. <laughs> we'll talk about those, too. Anyways, this is the Fisher Ranger 102 FR. Um, pretty exciting. It's uh, well, This will be, 2021 will be the third year for this ski. Mm -hmm. Um, Bob and I actually did a review of it probably about two years ago exactly when they kind of first introduced the 2019 version. Yep. Um, the ski is structurally and shaped the same, um, but Fisher's doing some cool stuff for 2021. This is a 191 centimeter, yeah. very, very pink ski. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of cool. What Fisher's doing is they're offering... Top back. Yeah, top and bottom. Um, they're basically offering... Most of their skis, the Rangers and the RC1 collection, in kind of two colors. Um, and they're not really differentiating. Like, they're not saying, like, this is the women's color and this is yeah. the men's color. They're just like, here's a ski. Yeah. Pick your color. So you can get the pink version all the way up to 191 um, and then all the way down yeah. through the women's lengths, right. if you want to call them that, really just the shorter lengths. Yeah. Um, so pretty cool. I think what? a 191 pink ski is just yeah. Really exciting. And then the blue is the other option. Yes, so the other option like is blue, blue. You can have a blue one. Yep. That's fine. Yep. I think we're going to see a lot of pink skis out there next season. Seen pretty much all guys on pink skis so yes. far this year. Yep, which we'll get to. Um, before we kind of jump into it, uh, Fisher contacted us a while ago and said, like, hey, do you guys want to give away a pair of these pink skis? And I was like, yes. Sure. Yes, we do. Um, so head on over to our Instagram account. It's at Ski Essentials. Um, I'll, I'll put a little link to it. Um, basically, it's going to run through, I believe, March 8th. It might be 9th. I can't remember exactly, but if you're watching this the day it comes out, you basically have through the weekend to enter into that giveaway, mm -hmm. um, and you could win a pair of these. So check that out, um, and without further ado, let's chat about this ski. Um, I think it's a really cool ski. Bob, what yep. about you? Yeah, I mean, I got out of that ski test the first year it came out. Yep. And was like, yep, this is kind of what I'm looking for is like a wider, playful, yep. you know, wood core ski with a little, a couple of different extras and a yep. little different feel about it. Yep. Um, so building off of their Ranger, like 98 TI, I guess would be right. my closest experience at the time. You know, the 102 was just, it was wider, more playful. More tail rocker. More tail rocker. Yep. You know, I, my instinct was to get right in the woods with this thing yep. and that's where I loved it was yep. in the trees here at Stout. Yeah, it's a cool ski. It checks a lot of boxes yep. for a lot of different skiers. Um, and if you're unfamiliar with it, we'll kind of run through the construction. We actually have some cool kind of visual aids here to talk about construction. Thank you to Fisher for dropping these off. Um, so this is the Ranger FR build, yep. which is basically true between the 102 and the 94 as yep. well. Um, Poplar and beech wood core, fairly straightforward. It's sandwich sidewall construction. Um, one thing that's unique about the way that Fisher produces skis is they use what they call an arrow shape. Shape? <laughs> an arrow shape. An arrow shape. Um, and basically, like, the top sheet of the ski has a very subtle little curve to it, um, which I actually think is, is engineered to provide more torsional stiffness, too. It's kind of like those, you know, triangular, like, yeah. step sidewalls yeah. that we've talked about before, yep. or trapezoidal sidewalls. Yep. Um, I believe it's a similar concept to that, um, but pretty darn cool construction. I really like just looking at this ski. Um, so that's that's a big part of it. They also mill out part of that wood core. Um, they call it AirTech, mm -hmm. uh, AirTech TI technically, because there is some metal in this ski too. Um, but that's one way. This is a pretty lightweight ski, yeah. just holding it. Um, that's one way that they get the weight down. And then Fisher's, this is their carbon nose, which has kind of... Mm -hmm. You know, we, we like 
ex- that's that's one thing that's just like a dead giveaway that it's a fisher when you see them on right. the mountain is that they they kind of you don't see the carbon as much and this in this ski yeah. as you do in some of the others but you can still tell it's there because the tip just gets so thin yeah um, and it, it does a phenomenal job like drastically reducing weight so the swing weight of the ski is super low yeah definitely. but then it retains a lot of torsional stiffness doesn't chatter too much up there right pretty cool um, so that's basically the gist of it like i said there's some metal underfoot here um, but that metal is mostly just for binding yeah. retention but if you want to put that one over there i want to compare it um, this is basically the Ranger TI build. Um, so you can just right away, I mean, we're not going to get too much into this because we're not talking about these skis today, but you can see just how much more metal there is. Right. Um, and actually the carbon nose in the FR models is longer, it extends further back towards your foot. So but two different builds. Link, but it doesn't link into the metal. No, it doesn't link into the metal, so which is interesting. That FR carbon stops here and then doesn't link to, yep. I mean, just the mounting plate, but it does have some structural to it. Yep. Um, whereas that goes right to the metal. Straight into the metal, um, which does just give this ski a little bit more beef yeah. and heft and stability, vibration, yeah. damping, stuff like that. Uh, but that's the gist of it. I don't know why I handed you that one too, but I'm going to go it. with it. Um, shape is pretty straightforward, I think. Yep. Uh, rocker camber rocker profile, more tip rocker than tail rocker. Uh, the 177 length has, I think, an 18 meter turn radius. This is Marcus's pair right here, which is the 191. Um, that is a 20 meter turn radius. Marcus has got the the new 2021 look pivot 15 on here too, right? Uh, which a lot of people are excited about. Just a side note: looks bringing back the pivot 15, full metal toe piece yep. just like the 18 but now it's a 6 to 15 yeah 6 to 15 din range instead of 8 to 18 and we so could talk for an hour about pivots too so. bob and i could talk for the rest <laughs> of the day about pivots but we're not going to do that um so yeah that's kind of the recipe of this ranger 102 fr yep. um great ski and the way that i wrote this review and i think the way that we're going to chat about this ski is there are three different skiers i mean there's more actually there's a ton of people on pink rangers already but there's three skiers uh, that come to mind for me at Stowe. They're all skiing this ski, and they're all a little bit different. Yeah. Um, so our friend Ryan, a uh, great friend of the staff here at Ski Essentials, very well known in the Stowe community, really good skier. Yep. He rips. Yeah. Like racing background. Um, he works at a you know performance oriented race shop. Does a lot of like weird boot canting right. and stuff like that. Stuff that I generally am just like I don't. Know. Let him deal with it. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Ryan's a phenomenal ski racer, just a really fun skier to watch. And it's really fun watching him ski this ski. And it, it's testament to how much you can do on this ski. Right. I mean, we looked at the difference in construction between this and the, the TI version. Yeah. Um, but I mean, watching Ryan lay carves over on this ski is pretty impressive, don't right. you think? I think we used the term, he's really good at creating high edge angles. Extremely. So he can get this 102, basically, it seems vertical, you know, yeah. when, he's, when he's bending it appropriately, and, yeah. you know, through the turn. You know, and I'm skiing behind him, and I'm, I'm pretty amazed at how vertical he gets this ski. And, yeah. And how much he makes it come around. So he's really good at pushing a ski to its limits yeah. of edge grip and stuff like yeah. that. And it's refreshing watching him ski this ski because he'll often like stop after a few, you know, after a third of the run or something and just be like, and I guess you don't need metal in right. skis, huh? Like, right. They hold an edge really, really well. I mean, like I said, the, the TI versions are going to be more powerful, mm -hmm. more vibration damping. But the fact that you can carve high speed turns on these right. and hold an edge is very impressive considering how versatile they are outside yeah. that realm. Yeah, it can, he shows that it can be done. Exactly. You know, it is within the realm of possibility. Exactly. You know, a 102 underfoot, non full metal. Exactly. Ski, which is. Now, you mentioned that you, when you skied them, you just wanted to go straight into the woods. Yep. Um, and the next skier that comes to mind is Marcus, who works right. here in, in, the, in Ski Essentials with us. He's our inventory manager. He's really tall. You've seen him in plenty of our content. Mm -hmm. um, I don't necessarily have any footage of him skiing the woods on this ski, although we did get some really some cool stills. pictures yeah. that I'll, I'll toss in this video. Um, but that's how I think of Marcus and how I think of his application for yeah. this ski. Um, so why don't you just give us what your thoughts yeah. are for tree skiing on this thing? Well, this morning we skied in the trees, and it was kind of hard 
um, with you know maybe a half inch of something on top. So, yeah. Um, but it was all packed in nicely, and you could just scoot right around. And kind of you needed your quick turning ability to get through those woods today because yeah. it was hard underneath. And uh, you know we both had a blast. You know yeah. I was on the 99 Ti and he was on these, and no problems whatsoever. Um, and that's kind of on the shallow, low angle side, but you know, deeper and steeper, it doesn't seem to be much of a problem either. No, I mean, I think the amount of tail rocker that it has, and then just kind of, it's it's not a drastic early taper, but the tips are yeah. pretty rounded and straight through the ends of the ski. Yeah. Um, from my experience on it, just releasing the tail edge is super easy. Like, it's, yeah. it's very buttery and smeary, and then it's also a light swing weight. So if you have to, like, really give it skier yeah. input and, like, snap your skis back and forth, um, it does that, yeah. and it's not like overly fatiguing like some skis can be. No, I mean it's just highly maneuverable. You can yeah. really just put this thing where wherever you want it to go. Yep. And even you know, I was I haven't skied the 191 yet. I've only been on the 185, 184. Yep. Um, and that was you know I wanted a longer ski. Yeah. But w was not disappointed with the maneuverability for sure. Right. Um, especially you know tight woods around here. So. Right. I thought it. Would, I thought it just fit right into wherever you wanted to put it. Definitely. Looked the same. And another back and another place. benefit for that application is it floats really well for a 102 waisted right. ski, which I think is testament to this tip. Um, it's really long, gradual rocker yep. in the tip of this ski, and it's also lightweight too yeah so it helps this the tip has a tendency to stay on top of the snow even when it gets deep which you can kind of see in the pictures of marcus like we had a 40 inch storm recently and marcus was skiing his 102s right. through it um, and i never heard him once complain about float or anything like yeah. that um, and i know marcus has skis in his quiver that are 110 and 115 mm -hmm. 120 plus right um and it's testament to the skis ability that he was skiing his 102s and was doing just fine. Right. Um, and now the third skier that I want to talk about is a friend of mine named Noah. Uh, we've both known Noah for a long time now. Um, basically, Noah has a freestyle background, mm -hmm. a little different than y your freestyle background. Right. Noah was more of a park, like in the early days of big air and slope style and half pipe, Noah was a pretty competitive yep. guy. Um, these days, I think he's about to turn 40. Pretty sure I have a pending invitation to his 40th birthday party. Sorry, I didn't sorry Noah. <laughs> you should invite Bob too. Uh, I'll RSVP soon. Uh, but yeah, Noah's he'll be turning 40 soon, so like he's not like a young park ripper anymore. But these days he coaches um, pretty much full time, and most of his or a big focus of his coaching is in the terrain part. And the other side of it is kind of free skiing, like like what Marcus does. And right. Noah and Marcus also happen to be very good friends. They went right. to college together. So for Noah. He uses the ski the same way that Marcus does on a lot of days. You know, he'll go ski trees and stuff like that and loves it. Yeah. Um, but what's different about Noah is he, he mounts his bindings a little bit further forward, so he gets a little bit more terrain part yeah. performance. And he uses the ski for switch spins, yeah. landing switch, sliding Rail, rails. rails and it, like, and it's, it can do it all. It, all yeah. sorts of stuff, um, which is just really fun to see. And for me, filming and conceptualizing and writing this review, it was just really interesting to see and to think about those three skiers and how different they are and how much each of them enjoys this ski. Right. And I think that's just a, maybe the biggest compliment you can give a ski is that like here's three different skiers, yeah. they all really, really like it. Um, now, Another thing I like about this ski, and, and probably something that people are going to ask about, and I think a good way to summarize this review, is in my opinion this ski is not something that's chasing superlatives. Yeah. It doesn't care. It doesn't care if it's the stiffest, most powerful. It also doesn't care if it's the lightest, softest flexing, most buttery ski. What it has is a very, very, very good mix of different performance right. characteristics. Yeah. So... It's not the best in any one category, but it's very good in every category, right. um, which to me is very valuable in a ski. Yeah, and a lot of companies shoot for it, and yep. you know there aren't a whole lot of hits. You yeah, know, I think, sure. And you know there there are, but you know not so much with like the comp competency of these. Yeah, um, and I think another I think what I'd add to that is it's. 
especially true in twin tips. Yeah. That it's rare that you get this amount of technology in a twin tip shape. Yeah. You know, I think we're seeing more and more of it, which I'm happy about, and I think it's partly due to the fact that skiers like me, who grew up like loving park skiing and yeah. still I still love park skiing, but I'm 34 and I'm kind of aging out of that category and I want more in my skis right. than just the ability to do a 720. Sure. Um, so I think it, it's just really cool to see the added technology in the twin tip side. Um, what we're going to talk about, I'm looking at another ski that kind of goes along the same lines right now. I'm sure you guys can think of others, mm -hmm. you know, like Enforcer 104s. Like mm -hmm. that's a great example. Like that was, it was rare to get that amount of technology and engineering focus in right. a twin tip. Yeah. Um, so very cool to see. Um, let us know how, if you have any questions. As always, this ski's been out for a few years, so maybe you won't have questions. Maybe you'll have new questions that you didn't think of before. Yeah. Maybe you'll have a question: Why is it so pink? Whatever you want to ask us, <laughs> let us let us know. Um, definitely enter that enter yeah. that contest on Instagram. You can win a pair. Um, we'll also be announcing the winners from the K2 Ski Happy contest either today or tomorrow, and then we'll be kicking off another round of Ski Happy sponsored by Solomon starting either Monday or Tuesday next week. So a lot of stuff, a lot of skis to win, a lot of fun things happening around here. Yeah, March is a great month. Yep, our ski test, our annual ski test is just three weeks away, which is kind of crazy. Yep. Um, so we'll be um, uh, kind of figuring out the list now, but it looks like we'll be testing around 300 skis this year. That's it? Yes, <laughs> that's it. <laughs> um, yeah, so let us know if you have any questions. Uh, we'll be testing skis, so we'll see you guys on the slopes. Bye.